To understand the impacts of climate change, we can look at specific regions more closely. But we can also investigate an entire ecosystem and find out how it is affected by climate change. The oceans, for instance. Now, oceans cover about two-thirds of the Earth's surface. You can imagine that changes in this huge component of the climate system directly affect climate change and have consequences for humans. Oceans have two issues to deal with. The physical issue. It's getting warmer. This has consequences for organisms such as the fish population. Now, we've already observed that migration of cod from the increasingly warmer North Sea to the North Atlantic, displacing native species. The second is a chemical issue, ocean acidification due to the additional anthropogenic CO2. Professor Ulf Riebesel heads the Biological Oceanography Research Unit at the Geomar Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research Kiel and is currently conducting relevant tests in Norway. The Geomar Press Secretary, Maika Nikolai, visited him in the middle of the ocean on our behalf. You'll find more information in the box below. The oceans are becoming more acidic because they absorb a quarter of all man-made carbon dioxide every year. This carbon dioxide then reacts with water, producing carbonic acid, which results in acidification. This can already be measured throughout the oceans. We can see that acidification has clearly progressed over the past few decades, and this process has resulted in an increase in seawater acidity of 26% since the beginning of industrialization. Ocean acidification will further progress depending on how CO2 emissions will develop. For a given CO2 emission scenario, as provided by the IPCC, we can accurately predict how acidification will proceed. From geological reconstructions we know that the current pH value is lower than what it has been in the past 800,000 years. The rate at which the pH level declines and the oceans acidify is higher than in the past 300 million years, which is the time period during which most living organisms evolved. Due to ocean acidification, it is becoming increasingly difficult for calcifying organisms to grow their shells and skeletons. They need to put an increasing amount of energy into this process, which impacts the growth and reproduction. Moreover, when seawater becomes corrosive to calcium carbonate, their shells and skeletons start to dissolve. This will happen first in polar regions already over the next few decades. Organisms that grow shells made of aragonite are particularly susceptible because aragonite dissolves very easily. It is very important to note that acidification currently occurs at such a rapid pace that it is becoming increasingly hard for organisms to adapt. Only organisms with very short generation times will likely be able to adapt through evolution. Apart from this, we can also see regional differences. In fact, some regions, particularly the polar regions, will be affected strongly and very early. Since water in the polar regions is relatively cold, it absorbs CO2 particularly well. Ocean acidification can cause these waters to become undersaturated within the next few decades. In other words, these waters will soon be corrosive to all calcifying organisms. Even with a relatively modest ocean acidification, as we predict for the next two, three or four decades at most, it already affects more than half of the organisms studied so far. This includes corals, echinoderms such as sea urchins and starfish, shellfish, mussels and snails, as well as fish. Crustaceans are less affected because their shells are made of chitin. From natural CO2 venting sites in the ocean, we know that local biodiversity suffers massively wherever the seabed degasses large amounts of CO2. Only few species are able to survive there, and the entire biodiversity is lost. So far, we've seen in all experiments that picoplankton, that is the smallest plankton, actually benefit from ocean acidification. 
This results in more biomass production. However, this doesn't reach the higher levels in the food chain because it is burned up directly at the base. We've also seen that calcifying algae, a very important component in the ecosystem, suffer as a result of acidification. They can no longer maintain their ecological niche in an acidifying ocean. This has far-reaching consequences, on the one hand for the storage of carbon, since calcifying algae contributes significantly to the storage of carbon in the deep sea, and on the other hand for the production of dimethyl sulfide, a climate-relevant gas that acts as cooling agent in the atmosphere. Under ocean acidification, less of this gas is produced by calcifying algae. Ocean acidification could also have consequences for human nutrition. Many people are dependent on marine organisms such as fish for their diet. A good example of this impact is on the west coast of the US, where oyster farms have been widely affected by ocean acidification. In fact, oyster larvae were not able to grow in these farms for many years. Another effect? Coral reefs are an important coastal protection. If they can no longer grow or if they regress, coastal protection is lost together with a habitat for a variety of organisms that are specifically adapted to live in coral reefs. These are the most biologically diverse ecosystems in the sea. And that's also one of the reasons that so many tourists visit them, to look at these wonderful ecosystems. Also important, ocean acidification causes the ocean's absorption capacity for carbon dioxide to decrease gradually, since progressively acidifying seawater can absorb less and less CO2. In all probability, we can say that biodiversity in the oceans will decrease if acidification progresses. Many species will no longer be able to cope with future conditions. We have initiated a process here that is no longer reversible, but we can mitigate it considerably. What it takes is obvious. We must reduce CO2 emissions urgently. We can all contribute to this, not just politicians, not just economic decision makers, but we as consumers need to make sure that CO2 emissions go down drastically.